Hello and welcome to my game recording setup video where we're going to be going through how I capture HD game footage and SD game footage directly from the original game's consoles and I'm also going to be going into a bit of detail about the camera equipment I use for reviews and also these style of videos too. Uh, if you haven't watched it already I've recently done a game room tour video where I go into detail about the changes that I've made to this room recently. So if you're interested in that, you can check that out in the description below. Also in the description below, there's going to be links to all of the equipment that I mention in this video. So, with all that out of the way, let's begin talking about my game recording setup. Behind me is the TV unit where most of the changes to the game room have been made recently. As you can see there's a 55 inch Samsung TV there and all of the game's consoles, both retro and modern, are plugged into it. The way that the modern consoles are all plugged into the TV is with a 5-way HDMI switch box. So what this is, is it's a little box where all of the game's console's HDMI cables are plugged into the back of it, and it basically turns all of those HDMI cables into one single HDMI cable that gets plugged into the TV. However, because I need to record game footage, my setup isn't quite as simple as that, and the HDMI cable going from the 5-way HDMI switch box is actually plugged into a 2-way HDMI splitter. I'm then running another two HDMI cables directly from that splitter, one of them going into the TV, and another one going into my capture card. The capture card that I use is an Elgato Game Capture HD60, which is by far the best capture card that I've ever used. I've used a Roxio one in the past, but it was awful and I could barely get it to function. So yeah, to be honest, I really couldn't recommend this particular capture card enough. Most setups would have a HDMI cable going into the capture card and another HDMI cable coming out of it and going into the TV. But I don't need to do that because of the way that my setup uses that two-way HDMI splitter and I've got one going into the TV from that instead. The reason that I've done it like that is primarily just to keep it from looking too messy. If I had two HDMI cables coming out of the capture card, I feel like it would look a little bit messy and restrict me but as it is now, it looks quite tidy. So that's how I record footage from the HD games consoles, but how do I record them from the SD games consoles like the NES, PS1 and PS2? Well, the way that I do this is by running the composite cables from those games consoles into an SD switch box. This switch box actually has two outputs, so one of those outputs is going directly into the TV so that I can actually play the games, and another one of those outputs is going into a composite to HDMI converter, and then I'm running a HDMI cable from that into the capture card. So basically I'm splitting the composite cables into two, one of them going into the TV, and I'm splitting another one, turning it into a HDMI cable so that it works with my capture card. A lot of bigger YouTubers would use a device called the FrameMeister to achieve this SD to HD upscale in effect, but the problem with that is that they're very expensive and right now I can't afford one. So these cheap composite to HDMI upscalers do the job pretty well for the time being. With the game's consoles all hooked up to record in this way, it means that they're all plugged into the TV at the same time using the switch boxes, but it also means that the only wire that I ever need to mess around with is the wire going directly into the capture card. So I've got one HDMI cable that's for the HD games consoles, and another HDMI cable that's for the SD games consoles, and they're both taped down to the top of my PC where my capture card is, so I've always got easy access to them. So a pretty major positive of this setup is that all of the games consoles and the TV and everything that requires power is all plugged into the same socket through a 10-way extension cable. This means that all I need to do is flick a switch and the power is supplied to all of my games consoles and they're ready to be played. Not only are the games consoles all ready to be played, but they're also all ready to be recorded too because everything is already plugged in and ready to go. 
The only real disadvantage to this setup is the amount of wires you need to be able to do it, and it can look quite messy when you take a look behind the TV stand. I think my setup uses 9 HDMI cables, and it also uses the 10 power cables that I mentioned earlier. So yeah, that's a hell of a lot of cables to have behind your TV. So now we've gone through how my consoles are all hooked up, but how do I actually do the recording? Well, let's take a look. So this is the office area of the room where I actually do the recording, and I do this by using software called OBS Studio, which is free. This software is great because not only can it record from capture cards, but it can also do display captures and game captures for PC games too, so if I'm ever talking about anything that needs that, I've got the tools there to be able to do it. This software was primarily designed for streaming, which is handy because whenever I do streams, I've got the same software there to use that I also use for my game recording, so I already know how to use it. Despite the software being good because it's easy to use, what I will say is that it does have a few quirks that make it a little bit frustrating sometimes. The main thing that's a little bit annoying is that it sometimes loses the signal from the capture cards and you have to restart the software and re-add the capture card to get it to recognise the signal. I've sometimes needed to do this about four times before it's actually responded to it, which is irritating, but at least it does work in the end. If you were doing content like Let's Plays, you can also record your voice into the software too, so there's no need to have multiple programs open at the same time. It's pretty good, and I would highly recommend it if you're making game content on YouTube. Basically, it's all in one game streaming and recording software, and I can't recommend it enough. If they ironed out the few little quirks that it's got that aren't too good, it would be perfect. When I'm all done with the game recording, the next step would be to edit the gameplay, and I do this by using Adobe Premiere CS 5.5. I know that there's newer versions of Premiere that exist now, but to be honest, I never really want to upgrade from the version I've got, because it does everything I need it to, and I know how to use it really well at this point too. If there's ever any really complicated video editing I need to do, I'll sometimes delve into After Effects, but I've only done this on about two occasions, and I try to stay away from that if I can. One of the times where I've recently used After Effects was when I made the new idem for the channel, which I think worked out quite well actually, and is probably the most complicated thing I've ever done in After Effects. The other software that I'll use is Adobe Audition for recording voiceovers, which is really handy audio editing software, but to be honest I really only use it for the actual recording, and I tend to edit the voiceover in Premiere just because that's what I'm used to. But yeah, Audition is great because it's so easy to use, it's literally just a matter of going new audio file, and then pressing record, and you're on your way. The only other software I use on a regular basis is Adobe Photoshop, and I use that to create the thumbnails for my videos, and again, it's fairly easy software to use, especially if you're only doing simple stuff. Moving on from that now though, let's talk about some of the filming equipment that I use, like my lights and my cameras and my microphone and that sort of stuff, because I think some of you all find that interesting. The main piece of filming equipment that I use is the camera that's recording me right now. It's a Canon 60D, and by today's standards it's actually a little bit old, and I'm kinda thinking about upgrading it in the near future. Having said that though, despite it being old, I would say that it's an amazing camera in terms of the usability of it. All the buttons are in such ideal places, and it's just a really user-friendly camera to have. My girlfriend has the Canon 5D Mark II, which is supposedly a better camera, but because of the button placement, it really isn't as user-friendly, so I always stick to my good old-fashioned 60D. Another piece of equipment that's vital to my video production is the microphone, which is a Rode VideoMic Pro. I used to have a microphone called the Zoom H1, and that was an external audio recorder, so it wasn't connected to the camera. What this meant is that while I was editing, I had to sync up the audio to the video, and it just took ages, and it was really, really annoying. Now though, with the Rode VideoMic Pro, it's attached to the top of the camera, and it's plugged into the camera's mic port, which means that the audio is already on the footage, so there's no need to sync it. 
Not to mention as well, the Rode VideoMic Pro is a way better microphone overall than any other microphone I've ever owned. Yet another bit of equipment that's vital to the way that I make videos is the lighting. Now with these I don't have a specific brand of lighting, I just got them off of Amazon and they were relatively cheap. They're just generic softbox lights, but they get the job done quite well and they're pretty bright to be honest too. It was a pretty good deal though because they came with the bulbs, they came with the actual softboxes, they came with stands and they came with handy bags as well to keep it all in. Another thing that I've got is a consumer grade tripod that's made by a company called Hammer. This tripod isn't the best quality in the world and it feels a little bit plasticky, but it gets the job done and it's not broke on me yet, so I'm just going to continue using it for now. I've also got an extension cable which is handy for plugging the lights in when I'm doing recording because the lights need to be in the middle of the room so in order to have it plugged in I kind of need that extension cable because the lights wires are quite short. In terms of the video recording equipment that I use on a regular basis that about sums everything up but in terms of voiceover equipment, I also have a small cheap tripod that I use to attach the mic to. The mic that I use for voiceover is the same mic that I use for the normal videos, so the Rode VideoMic Pro. But when I'm using it for voiceovers, I use a pop shield and, like I say, it's attached to a different tripod. The reason that it's attached to a tripod rather than to a proper mic stand is simply because I had a spare tripod so I figured I might as well use it, otherwise it's just going to be sat there gathering dust. I had to actually buy a hot shoe adapter for the tripod to be able to fit the mic on top of it, but they were really cheap so that's a good alternative to a mic stand if you don't have one. Another thing to mention is that when I'm done with recording, I actually have to pack all of this equipment away and put it back into the cupboard where it's stored. The reason that I do this is because this room is actually used as a proper game room where we sit and play games casually. Well, I think that about sums everything up. We've talked about how I've got all my games consoles plugged in to record. We've talked about the software that I use to do all the editing and recording. We've talked about my film equipment. So yeah, I think that's everything. If I've missed anything, let me know in the comments and I'll try and get back to you with more information. So, until next time, bye!